This episode of the Soupcast is brought to you by the Med Canadian Barbecue Company. Med Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they usually say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Great seasonings over at the Med Canadian BBQ.com, such as the Coffee and Q, perfect for this lovely Sunday morning that we're recording, the smoked, the SP Bud, the Discord, or the old fashioned. Hey, why not have an old fashioned Sunday morning, right? <laughs> you can't go wrong with any of the great flavors over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. While you're there, be sure to check out the all the social medias that Mad Canadian has to figure out where him and his food truck are heading to next. While you're also at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com website, be sure to use that promo code SLOOPCAST10, SLOOPCAST10 for 10% off your entire order. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company where he has your butt covered. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company, a coffee I am drinking right this second. And not only am I drinking the coffee, I'm drinking the coffee from an Iron Bean Stein. The camera's not going to focus, but it's it's Christmassy, all right? Am I still using it in April? Yeah, I am. Get over it. Uh, <laughs> uh, why? Why the Iron Bean? A lot of coffee companies out there. Why the Iron Bean Coffee Company? Well, first and foremost, Ohio-based, just outside of Toledo in Perrysburg, Ohio. So you're supporting local. Uh, they're a premium, small-batch, roast-to-order, veteran-owned coffee company. Supporting veterans, supporting um, an Ohio-based company. It's small-batch roasted and it's roast-to-order, which means your coffee is always fresh. It's not sitting in a warehouse. It's not sitting on the grocery store shelves for months and so on on end. It, no, it's fresh every time. It's it's kind of like going, you want to go to a fast food place where the hamburger has been sitting underneath a heat lamp forever? Or do you want them to start making your food the second you order it? You want the latter because it's just a better product. Coffee is no different. You want it roast to order. Don't 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 mess with that stuff that sits on the shelves for months and months. Uh, why else? All of the beans are fair trade certified and USDA organic. It is this is an integrity based company. Uh, you can get free shipping over fifty dollars, and there is a subscribe and save service. You have an amazing selection of different coffees, and I'll get back to you on what some of those coffees are during the next ad read. So. For right now, if you want to check it out yourself, you can just go to ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. All right, Discord. All right, YouTube. This is normally where we play the Black Keys up. I, I realized I hadn't actually explained this a long time. And if anyone's watching on YouTube who maybe didn't watch this little moment of silence right here. Uh, this is this is where we drop music into the audio only version, but uh, we don't we can't do that on YouTube. Uh, so instead, we just have a private conversation with you guys that the uh, the audio folk don't get. So they get music. It's nothing awkward about this moment. This is a planned break from the podcast. This is mm -hmm. the exclusive port. It's a, it's an exchange. The the YouTube or rather the audio only people they they get music. You guys get a a, a little slice of extra conversation. By the way, I think I nailed that Iron Bean read. I think that was one of my all time Iron Bean reads. I'm not gonna lie. Yes. I've had let's, some let's, hear, let's hear your overreaction to to the spring game. What's what's your overreaction whoa. to, whoa, whoa. to we what we saw started, Saturday? We haven't started the show yet. What well, that's actual content. Well, down down in the down in the Oh, you're talking to the, the YouTube comments. people, not me. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, over we want overreacting. We want overreaction in the comments below both mm -hmm. from our discord yes. people live joining us and from the YouTube people. Yep. All right. Let's, let's go ahead and get into it. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. 
Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well. How are you today, Jared, on this lovely Sunday morning? Uh, you know, it's it's all good. I'm we're, we're, we're Kyle's got some like real life stuff, so we're recording this uh earlier than we normally would. So, like if my ability to like recall names is extra bad today, it's because the Adderall takes a little bit to kick in. And as does we, the we, caffeine. We, we got no excuse. We No, we I'm building to... excuses. I'm building excuses in because I know I'm going to get stuck trying to think of people's names. And it's just I'm I'm just not I'm not at like peak mental yet. That's all. Well, I like to give um, a big thank you to Tom and Tony for sending us <laughs> the official <laughs> pronunciation guide per their um, the Buckeye Scoop pregame. Um live show that they did over at the Buckeye Scoop um, YouTube channel Saturday morning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't read it. <laughs> um, oh, no, they, 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 went ahead and sent, they went ahead and sent us the the official pronunciation guide of probably about, I don't know, looks like about 25 to 30 names on here. Yeah. <laughs> my my favorite, and of course, Seven Bank, this has been in the Ohio State Media Guide for a while now, uh, just because Seven Banks has been with the program for a little while now. Still, my favorite, my favorite is is Seven Banks pronunciation guide because all the other ones have like hyphens and like capitals to show you where the the Seattle's inflection is. I can't think of words. Seven? Nah. His pronunciation guide simply is seven. I made a Z. The number seven. Seven. <laughs> <laughs> Or even, or even, uh, G Scott Jr. It's just the letter G. Yeah, just, just for for anyone who's been around Ohio State for a while, it's not G like our like the former president of the university. It is G. Just yep. Just so you know, this year. All, All right. right, uh, let's let's get into the actual show, Kyle. We have a lot to get to. We have a spring game to overreact to, and I think that's what we're doing today, Kyle. Let's mm -hmm. overreact. Let's overreact to the spring game. Let's make a bunch of broad sweeping predictions and assumptions based off of us being able to see one practice out of the many, many spring practices. But we only got to see one. So let's let's draw a mm -hmm. bunch of ridiculous conclusions from that. Yep. Uh, but before <laughs> that, first, before we do that. OK, before we do that, a couple of other news here uh let's talk about well sticking with football black stripes one of our favorite things to talk about like black stripes and black jerseys yeah, but buddy. but here with the black black stripes two more names with their stripes removed a name we'll be mentioning here shortly uh emeka is one and the other is um reed, reed. no i why, why you just misspelled it it's reed reed thank you I cannot thank you. Reed. Yep. Reed yeah. the uh, linebacker. Um, He's in the pronunciation yeah. guide too. Yes. <laughs> yes. I was, I was looking at that. Yeah. It, Carico Reed Carico. <laughs> um, yep. So we got two more off the, off the list. I think that's a total of six, I believe so far this year. Um, definitely expect more as we get into the summer slash fall camp. Um, yeah later this year but before that we have to get through the wasteland <laughs> yeah send send your wasteland topics to the uh buckeye sloopcast uh yeah and just any sort and what does that mean for anyone who might be a new listener we just we need stuff to talk about during the summer so if you've ever wanted to ask a question that might take an entire episode to answer now's your time mm -hmm. and some of the, some of the big topics in our discord which if you which, by the way, if you want to be part of our Discord, just daily conversations, whether it's Buckeye football, Buckeye sports, sports in general, or just anything else, um, be sure to hook us up in the in the Discord. Uh, it's it's a lot of great folks in there um, with a lot of interesting conversations that happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see basketball. Let's take a quick. Quick detour into basketball, Kyle. Yes. Uh, two uh, big pieces of news. Kyle Young announces his return. Mm -hmm. And Ohio State is adding a 
big center. Uh, he is, I believe, a sixth year senior. Uh, Joey Brunk. Uh, he played for Indiana. He was on the roster for Indiana last year, although didn't play as he was hurt. Played for Indiana the year before that. Yes. And spent his first three years at Butler. And if you're wondering, oh, he was at Butler. Did he cross? Yes, he did. Yeah, he he absolutely played for Holtman and was recruited by Holtman to Butler. So if you're looking for a connection there, there it is. Yep. Now, what does this mean as far as Ohio State potentially being able to, you know, there's the five star from IMG Academy, and I already warned you, my name recall ability is going to suck today, so I'm forgetting his name. Uh, if anyone in the chat or if Kyle wants to help me out, um, the five star from IMG Academy, big center, big player, he was supposed to announce on. Uh, announced this week. Yeah, Efton. Thank mm -hmm. you, yes. Stuart. Um, he was then then just didn't like it, everyone was just waiting because he didn't he didn't specify a time of day. Everyone was waiting all day, all day, all day, and then eventually his mom just sends out a tweet saying, "Not today, folks." So what does that mean? I don't know. Uh, because he was he's he's a five he's a five star player. And on the day of his announcement, he had zero crystal balls. And I get that, like, it's not. I, I feel like the 24-7 recruiting stuff is more dense than than the on the football side than on the basketball side. But still, a five star on the day of his announcement, allegedly, it turned out not to be. But. On the day of his announcement, at zero crystal balls. If that tells, and by the way, like no one knows where he's leaning. If that no, tells he, you how he, close he's playing this, yeah. And even if you look, even today, I, I just refreshed here. Still zero crystal balls in a top twenty-five composite, yeah, ranking yeah. top twenty-five athlete. Still no crystal ball predictions. No one knows that there was a bit of smoke on what was supposed to be his announcement day. Uh, like a little tiny bit of smoke that he may have been leaning towards Florida state. But even <clears throat> then that was, that wasn't like being reported by anyone like super solid. So yeah. I don't know. Uh, the fact that Ohio state has now accepted the transfer Kyle from, from Brunk. Is that yeah. a, it, it may, it may, but I mean, we'll see. Is that, is, we'll, we'll is see. that a negative indicator? Yeah, I mean, you can def, you can definitely look at it that way, or you can just look at it also as like, hey, maybe Ohio State's just trying to get two big men, get a, a solid backup in, in hope of that, um, that Efton does come along, and you got, you got yourself a starter in the backup role as well, maybe. I, but, I'll tell you right now, Brunk's not coming to Ohio State to – to to be second string and uh efton reed is not going to spend at least in his mind we'll actually see but in his mind isn't going to spend much time in college basketball so you know take take it for what it's worth uh it's probably a bad sign for ohio state re efton reed but it's uh joey brunk is is still a great ad he was a captain for Indiana last year, despite not playing, if that tells you anything. Yep. All right, Jared. Spring game. Spring game. Let's do it. Let's, let's overreact. overreact the spring game. Here. Let's overreact. Uh, let's see. I asked for some overreactions. Uh, Brawley, Bra said, Brawley says his overreaction is that the kicking punning will be a problem. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that. If you're looking for an overreaction, that's a good place to start. Uh, there had been some rumblings that uh, Jesse Murko was having some issues in camp. Um, it, and the, the field goals were uh, troubling. <laughs> yeah, yeah this, this might not be a great year for Ohio State kicking the ball. 
missed a 30 and a 40 yard field goal. Yeah. On so, Saturday afternoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, if we're if we're looking for things to ever react to, special teams might be an issue. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Well, what other? What real other, quick from what other? Oh, go from, ahead. Uh, Brawley's giving us an update because I know he was at the spring game. Um, he said even during the warmups, he didn't look great. So he's not just basing that off of the two in the game. He's letting us know because, Bra- like I said, Brawley was there. Uh, didn't look good during the warmups either. Now, was it one bad day? No, because we're overreacting. That's what we're doing today. We're <laughs> making broad assumptions based off of a single practice. Mm-hmm. That's what we're doing today. All right. Quarterback battle, Jared. Probably probably the most I'm you know I'm the team most things everybody everybody's wanting to know here. Yeah. Is there going to be separation in the quarterback yes. battle? Yes, absolutely. Jagger's your starting quarterback. Yes. Daddy I mean, was a rolling dude, stone. Dude only missed one completion all game and had the best throw of all the quarterbacks. Yeah, no, no, no. Because we're making ridiculous assumptions right now, right? Let's because and hat hat tip to Tony on this one. Hat hat tip to Tony Gerdeman who uh dug up this tweet from 2019. Um this was from Joey Kaufman. Uh, the again, the tweet was right after the 2019 spring game. Some quarterback stats from Ohio State spring game. Justin Fields, four of 13 for 113 yards. So that was our first look at <laughs> that was our first look at Justin first and Fields. Only spring camp spring game. Yeah. Uh, well, no. <laughs> uh, oh, that's right. Because we canceled last year's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, so yeah, Justin Fields only spring game four of thirteen. Uh, Matthew Baldwin, on the other hand, twenty of thirty six for two hundred and forty six yards. So, if we were making ridiculous assumptions then, let's make a ridiculous assumption now. And uh, that is a Rolling Stone. Jagger Larue is. I, I think he's the quarterback. You guys. No, but mm-hmm. so in all, in all seriousness, in all seriousness, uh, we had a bit of a watch party in the Discord. Uh, we invited everyone to the Discord to come and watch the spring game with us. We streamed it in the Discord. Um, and and by the way, Big Ten Network, we we left your commercials in the stream, so you you still got yours. Don't don't you worry. Um, but we were we were watching it, and during that last drive. You know, and towards the end, we're just we're chatting a lot because we had everyone's microphone. Well, we had the Sloop Cats microphones on. So we're chatting with all the Sloop Cats. And uh, I don't know if the Big Ten Network didn't show it or if we just missed it. Jagger comes in. And throws, I think, the best, like the prettiest pass of the entire spring game. And I didn't know it was him. I still thought Stroud was in. And I was like, oh. There, that's Stroud's best throw of the day. <laughs> Turned out it was Jagger. Turn out, turn out we looked at the numbers. It's like, oh, it's 19. Who's 19? <laughs> <laughs> Looking there, and it's Jagger Laroe, senior. <laughs> oh, it was it was a pretty pass, and then he he gets the touchdown to end the game. Now, so mm-hmm. just we're obviously kidding. Um, yeah. If you if you if you seriously want to ask me, I I think Kyle McCord looked the best, if we're being honest. Now, why does Kyle McCord look the best? Is it because he is the best? I, I'm not saying that. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. We're ever reacting. Yes. Start Kyle McCord. No, I'm kidding. Um, I think that he was playing a little looser. I think he was playing a simpler version of the offense. Um. I I think Stroud and Miller both knew that this was going to drive perception about who's winning the quarterback battle. Mm -hmm. And I think that they were both playing a little tight. I think they were both forcing some balls. I think they were both staring down their wide receivers a little too much. They looked like unexperienced redshirt freshmen. That's 
So, so my my rea- my reactions of those three, Stroud, Miller, and McCord. So I, I wrote down here. I was writing some notes as we were watching the game here. So Miller Miller got the uh, got the start, if you want to say, got the first snaps for for um for the game. Uh, there were times, and it wasn't just the first drive. There was there was a few drives when Miller was uh, back taking snaps, just was off his target, overthrowing open wide receivers. I remember one that he threw, I think it was to, um, I think it was either to Emeka or um, Jackson Smith, uh, JSN as we call him. Uh, it was just wide open and he just overthrew him by like five yards into the end zone. Yeah. Uh, but other times too, like he looked good. I think Miller looked the best in terms of going through his reads. Like you can see him just like one, two, three, going through his reads there. I, I thought he looked the best of the three, but unfor- it, unfortunate, unfortunate for him, that first drive, yeah. it looked, yeah. it, he looked, he looked okay in that first drive, but capped it off with an interception right in the end zone to uh, Ryan Watts. Well, and to contract, to maybe disagree with what you said on that interception, he 100% stared down his wide receiver and threw it to him, despite the fact that he was not at all open. Yes, and that one particular, yes, he, he yeah. did stare him down. And yeah, that was just a bad throw. You got you to gotta throw that up to where only your receiver can get it or no one can get it. That was just, that was just a good heads up play by, um, by Watts. And it was just an easy pick for him. Uh, Stroud, honestly, I thought Stroud looked really good at times. Um, he looked really good under pressure when the pocket started collapsing. He was able to, to get his feet moving. Uh, he he was 16 for 22 for the game, buck 85 and two touchdowns for the game. Uh, and I mentioned too, McCord, most accurate of the of the three. He was 12 for 17, 184, so just one yard shy of CJ Stroud and and also two touchdowns as well. Um, I thought McCord uh, looked really good running and throwing, so getting out of the pocket, running and throwing it. He looked he. He seemed to be really accurate at that. Uh, I want to say he's a running quarterback, but he he extended his plays more so. And the way that he extended it, uh, he was able to stay on target. Still, I I thought in that game, McCord looked looked the best of the three in that game. I see you throwing shade down there, Stuart, and I laughed at you. Uh, the, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I I mean, for being super honest. I, I think if we're talking arm talent, it's 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 Kyle McCord. Like, dude had some zip on some balls. I think they were some of the best placed balls. Again, I think he was just playing a little bit looser. I think the other guys had a bit of pressure on him. Again, not that the job is going to be won or lost based on the spring game. I know we're having fun saying let's overreact and all of that. But, like, I get it. It's... He 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 looked like he was out there with nothing to to lose, which is probably true. He's probably not going to win the starting job. Um, McCord beats both in pure arm talent, uh, uh, is what Raleigh says, and I I agree. I I think from pure arm talent, McCord's the dude. Uh, does he know the offense as well? I here here's the problem with with McCord, and not with McCord the problem with the situation McCord is in. I mean, he dude should still be in high school right now. He, well, well, well that, yeah, he should be in high school right now, but McCord can't just be better. He, he can't just be better. He has to be much better because there are consequences of starting McCord. If you start McCord, then you immediately put both Miller and Stroud as transfer risks. Uh, they're absolute. Both of them are going to at least have a discussion with their family about entering the transfer portal. If you start, if you start McCord now, is that a reason not to do it? I, I don't know. Uh, that's again, he can't just be better. He has to be much better. He has to be undoubtedly better than both of the other players in order to take on that risk. Second, Mm -hmm. 
if you start McCord this year, how does Ewers see that? You have a generational quarterback sitting in your recruiting class. Then the way he's currently viewing things is that I don't think you, you, you just never know. You, I don't know if you want to enter into a situation if you're Ewers where you're looking at two years on the bench where he might be looking at just one year on the bench. If like, if Stroud comes in or if Miller comes in and then, you know, they play this year, play next year and then leave, then Ewers is starting as a redshirt freshman. The Mm -hmm. math changes a little bit if a true freshman is starting this year. And I'm not saying that Ewers would absolutely decommit in that situations. I I don't think Ewers thinks he's going to be starting next year. I I think Ewers understands that he'll be a redshirt freshman starter. There's a process that needs to happen. I I think he understands that. Uh, I, I just don't. I'm not again, I'm not saying Ewers would decommit absolutely decommit if if McCord but it's a risk it's a thing you have to weigh McCord can't just be better he has to be obviously better yep and and in this one practice he he wasn't obviously better no I I do think he looked the best of the three but was he heads and tails better no Mm -hmm. Uh, I think Stroud looked the most consistent uh, yeah. I think that both, I think all three of them looked great at times. And I think all three of them looked bad at times. Uh, because they're freshmen. <laughs> yeah. This is, this I, is what you get. I have, I have here also if you, um, from Stroud here uh, right before the end of the first quarter. Um, I see you Stuart. <laughs> <laughs> um, Stroud, Stroud looking good on boot outs too. So just fake handoffs and just booting out and hitting, hitting targets on the run there too. So agreed. Broadly. Yeah. Like you, like you said, Jared, all three looking good, looking bad at times. Uh, but I don't think anybody kind of separated themselves or we really took anything away from like, Hey, did anybody separate themselves in this game to try to solidify themselves? All right. Kyle, one- the answer is no to that. One more question about the quarterbacks. Then I think we do an ad break and then we can, we need to move okay. away from the quarterbacks and start talking about some of the other players. So, but one more question, re the quarterbacks. Uh, during the second half, we basically went one-on-ones. We, we basically dropped the premise of a game and just went one-on-ones in the second half, which by the way, I'm all for. Uh, it, it, that, that was fine. I take far less offense to that than I do not doing scarlet versus gray but whatever uh is it telling that i need to clear my throat sorry about that is it telling that stroud got the first series of the second half when they went one-on-ones and is it telling that of the three quarterbacks he was the only one that got a second drive. Now he didn't get a complete second drive because they brought in LaRue and they brought in the kid from California, whose name I'm not going to remember. I'll look it up. Uh, I'll look it up while you're answering the question. Andre. Thank you. Uh, is it telling that? Thank you, Stuart as well. Uh, is it telling that only Stroud got even a, a second drive, even if it was only half of a drive and that he got the first drive. Is that telling? And if it is, how telling? Nope. Overreact, Jared. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. We're overreacting. We're overreacting. Stroud's the quarterback, everybody. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's, no, let's no, no, no. But seriously, but no, no, no. I, I, want, I do want a serious answer. Is it telling and how telling is it? <laughs> in all seriousness, I, I really don't think so. I just think they just wanted, maybe there's something that they just want to see from him. They just wanted to see a little bit more compared to his first drive. 
I think it's slightly but telling. Overreacting, yes. Like if if I'm overreacting, yes, it is telling because <laughs> they want to see how he can finish up here because they said this is the last drive. This is to win the game here and see see how they react. So yes, Stroud is the guy, just like you said, Jared. And you know, and you who else is the guy? Our good friends over at the Iron Bean Coffee Company, Jared. Oh, oh, you oh, you switched it up on me and sent it back at me. I wasn't expecting that. I thought you were gonna. Okay, hold on, hold on. Cal threw a <laughs> swerve ball at me. Okay, so I, I told you why the Iron ball. Bean Coffee Company in the first ad read. So let, let's talk a little bit. Let's talk a little bit about some of the coffees. We I already got you like you're sold on iron. That first ad read, I killed it, and you know I killed it. So. Now you're thinking I'm definitely going to buy some iron bean coffee, right? Okay. Let's talk about what kind of coffees they have. Uh, I am right now, as we speak, uh, drinking some coffee. Uh, It is, in fact, iron bean coffee. And it is, in fact, the... uh, Which one is it? It is... Yeah, it's the drink from the skull of your enemy. This is what I'm drinking right this second. I'm drinking that. Uh, So that is a dark roast. Uh, It's a traditional Indonesian coffee, uh, edgier, smokier, thick, creamy, chocolatey, notes of strong cedar, sweet tobacco, wine, and spice. Yeah, it is that good. Just so we're clear, it is that good. Does it sound good? Okay, it is actually that good. Let's look at some of the other dark roasts. We got the Fear No Evil. Uh, It's roasted to the brink of flames. So. I called this a dark roast, but it's it's beyond a dark roast. It's it's really more of a black roast. Uh, uh, rich black, dark, and void of light, sheen-like armor. Uh, there's also the Integrity, which is the flagship roast of the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Uh, it makes a great espresso. That, I mean, that's it's it's the mainstay flagship. And if you're an if you're an espresso person, I, I think this is this is where you gotta go. Uh, let's see what else we got in the dark roast. We have the fierce. The fierce is 100% arabica beans. Uh, it gives you the confidence to take on your day. Uh, there's the rocco, which is available in both medium and dark roast. Um, it's a unique Ethiopian natural. Um, it but it. So it's like it's it's just like a pure Ethiopian coffee, but it definitely it it, it demands to be noticed. It's it's beyond tradition. Uh, no, it is traditional, but it's it's probably better than what you're drinking right now. I guess is what I'm attempting to say and maybe failing it. I nailed the first ad read, struggling this time. I'm gonna be honest. Uh, so I think I'm gonna pull the cord on it and just tell you to go check it out yourself over at the IronBeanCoffeeCompany.com. Uh, Iron Bean Coffee Company, America's local, uh, America's local coffee roaster. I I used all of my good ad read on the first one. (laughs) This episode is also brought to you by our good friends over at the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company will not let you down on your next barbecue. Barbecue. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, so some of the some of the ones some of the ones that um, I recently bought because I ran out of a uh, few seasonings. I'm like, hey, let's restock. Hey, summer's summer's right around the corner. I've already grilled a few times. So I'm gonna really get some good use out of my grill this year. Uh, I bought myself another Sonoran Heat, probably my favorite of the seasonings over at the Mad Canadian. One of my favorites because uh, they're all my favorites. Uh, <laughs> Sonoran Heat is one of the most versatile seasonings. Um, it started off as a taco seasoning, became a uh, favorite for everything from tacos to chicken and even on burgers. I put it on burgers. It gives it that, that um, flavor born of the Southwest, with just the right amount of spice and heat. I also bought myself a S&P bud. Can't go wrong with salt and pepper blend. It's a just a very versatile seasoning that just goes great on everything uh some other ones good for the for the summer here is the smoked you want to get that uh you want to get that good blend of smoked paprika uh that will be just gives you that great smoky taste um look no further than the smoked uh he puts that on the mac himself puts that on a lot of his barbecue food that he does over at uh 
his food trucks. So by the way, if you're interested in his food truck, check out his social medias there. Uh, and the other one here, the Discord, just because I love everybody who's in the Discord here. So I'm going to show the Discord some love here as well. Uh, Matt Kenny says they test, 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 and more testing uh, to try to get this Discord, this unique taste here. In a way, it's a four, it's a four horsemen, but has a slight uh, blend difference to it. It's It has a sweeter base to it, which makes it a great topping for chicken and ribs. Check out those and all the other great great seasonings over at the bbq.com that is the bbq.com promo code sloopcast 10 at checkout for 10 percent off mackinny barbecue coming where he has your butt cover all right Kyle. all right so, jared uh, wide receivers hold, you beat me to it well hold on i i wanted to jump back to the discord real quick and we and we are going to hit the wide receivers though because i i once again i asked the discord you know some of your reactions so mm-hmm. we we covered uh, some of the quarterback overreactions, and I want to go back to some of the stuff that Stewart said here. Uh, Stewart says Marvin Harrison will be a stud. There you go. Now we're in the wide receivers. Uh, All right. Yeah, uh, looked good. Looked real good. Oh boy. Oh, uh, yep. Here, here's here's some of my notes here. I'm just going to run through here, and we can, if you want to, chime in or give your two thoughts. So, <laughs> first thing, CO two. Still good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Still good. I, I'm, I'm yeah. going to be honest. Anytime I saw a wide receiver make a great play, I'm like, oh, who was that? Uh, it was it was just a lave again. Because <laughs> you you kind of watch stuff when you do a podcast, you kind of watch stuff like, oh, here's the thing I can talk. Eh, it's Chris Olave. It's old news. <laughs> Yeah, did, did, is, is he making amazing catches, running amazing routes, creating incredible separation? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it, it's old news. I can't talk about how great CO2 is on the podcast because duh. Because duh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on the, was it the second drive? Second or third drive, uh, Wilson most, I believe it was DeMario. Uh, I, I think it was McCall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it was Alave that did it. I think no, it was, it was Wilson. No, it was Wasn't it was it? Wilson because he he caught that and then um came down and um wasn't that the play where he got he got um okay it was Olave okay Olave is the one who mossed the call <laughs> yeah um, I no but I thought all the wide receivers looked great um, yeah. the quarterbacks had their struggles and. So that that sort of tempered it a bit. And also like the, the same issue we're going to have all year. There's just only one ball. <laughs> yeah, I would have well, actually well, really I would have really liked to seen like Olave and Wilson held out of this game, if I'm being super honest with you. Yeah, well, Wilson made some great catches, too. Yeah, he he had a play where he he called and was slow to get up and we're like, all right. And even even when we we're all discussing, Jared's like, "All right, that's it. That's all we're going to see from Olave and Wilson from now on. After after that, but but it wasn't true. Nope, that wasn't true. They continued playing after that too. Um, so Wilson Wilson's still really good, still really great route runner. Uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. probably had the greatest, probably had a the best game of all the wide receivers in terms of I guess stats." Um, he had the most, rece- uh, tied for the most receptions, most yards also had the first touchdown of the afternoon. Uh, just overall, it was just a great performance by, um, Marvin Harrison jr. Uh, yeah. Emeka, Emeka, who just lost his black stripe showed flashes of, um, really good plays too. Um, I want to say he also had seven catches as well. I believe. I think he had seven catches for like 70 ish yards, 80 yards, somewhere around there too. Showed really good flashes of um of athleticism as well. Williams, a little, little shaky, um, dropped the first first pass of the of the afternoon, but then redeemed himself um after that in that first drive. And and JSN. JSN's just another name you just gotta really keep an eye out for. Um, made some really good catches all afternoon as well. Just kind of just kind of my thoughts. Absolutely. For, for the I, afternoon. I mean, headline wide receivers. Good. <laughs> I mean, what 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 else is there to say? Really? Um, Marvin Harris. There's a lot of hype coming about or coming from the Ohio State spring practices. 
listen, Marvin Harrison Jr. got his stripe removed before Emeka Ibuka, which is not a thing we had on our bingo card. And I, I've heard, I think this was from a Nevada Nugget, but I've I've heard it somewhere. The a report out of spring camp saying that Marvin Harrison Jr. was criminally underrated by the draft or, or not the draft services, the recruiting services. Apparently, he's just. Everything. Plus more that you would expect from Marvin Harrison's kid. Mm hmm. Uh, let's see another Stewart overreaction that uh, yeah, none of these are really four, overreactions. I think these are just kid. good observations. Yeah. If I'm being honest with you, uh, he says Jack Sawyer is going to be a starter this season at some point. I, I'm not going to say starter um, unless they get real heavy throwing oars on the on the depth chart. If they basically have like you know four starting defensive ends because it's Zachary Harrison or a, so yeah, I'm, I'm not seeing him as a starter. That being said, he might receive equal reps as a starter or darn near equal reps as starters. But and he might end up, you know, much like we saw Nick Bosa as a, a true freshman play like some defensive end during like obvious passing situations. <laughs> no, you know what, Stuart, you're right. That is your overreaction and you are entitled to it. <laughs> um, but no, he looked great. I, I think Kyle agree or disagree with me on this. If you had to pick the one, one player, if you had to pick one player who had like the spring game, who had the spring game, I think it's Jack Sawyer. It, yeah, it's Jack Sawyer. Four unofficial sacks in a strip as well. Yeah. Yeah. And, yes. and you know, he had some he had some benefits. I think I think Petit Fari surprisingly didn't play. Uh Munford didn't uh play a lot. Uh I so I think there the the tackle play at Ohio State during the spring game was a bit light. So he wasn't going up against Ohio State's best, but still. Uh, but still, <laughs> I think I'll leave it. At, but still, uh, he he looked amazing. Uh, he looked like a dominant force. Uh, all of that fourth Bosa talk is real. Hmm. Oh, I I misspoke. Actually, Mecca had the most yards. I apologize. Oh. I got those two mixed around. Mecca had the most yards. They both Marvin and Mecca had the same catches, but Marvin has the touchdown. But Mecca had the most receptions of all the receivers. Uh, Stuart, I know you're Stuart. I know you're joking, Stuart, but he says tackles are the weakest is what Jared is trying to say. Uh, they were very light during the spring game. NPF didn't play. Munford had pretty limited snaps. Mm -hmm. And then like maybe the third best tackle on the team, they've been playing at guard all season. So like that even then sort of diminishes the depth at your tackle position and it's also just the toughest position to play. Like, as, as, as Stuart says, overreact to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I know. I, I, I know, Stuart. But <laughs> again, if we're talking about the offensive line, the tackle position is the toughest position to play because you're out there on an island. There's, there's not another, unless, you know, you're getting like a tight end to help you out by chipping or whatever. You're out there on an island. Mm -hmm. so yeah uh sawyer looked amazing and I, I i don't think he starts this season without maybe some injury assistance you know there's always that possibility well, he'll see a lot of playing time oh, maybe but he'll not get a lot of i agree i agree probably not starter right away as a as a true freshman but i mean dude dude shows should still be in high school right now and he, he came in to the spring game with he, four sacks and a strip and just looked mon just like a monster out there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh running backs, Jared. Well, yeah. The running back oh, running well, backs I, Crowley got the first snaps indication. Well, and just to go back to, you know, Stewart gave us some good overreactions here. Crowley will be a stud this year. 
So good, good synchronization on that. Yeah. Uh, Crowley got first snaps, uh, both him and Henderson, the running backs. We, you, you just cannot tell from no. the screen game because it's like, Oh, two hand tap down yeah. right there. So you, you couldn't tell from running, but out, out in space, catching the ball, both dudes, Crowley and Henderson can catch the ball. There, there, there was one, there was one pass. Um, I'm trying to, remember who it was to here. I'm trying to look real quick, but it was a, it was just a beautiful, just, it was a wheel route right, right in the path of Crowley, just right on the run, just no hesitation, no, yeah, no, any, yeah. And it was just a great throw. I'm still trying to find who. I believe that one was Miller. McCord. McCord. Okay. It was McCord. Uh, So as far as the running backs go, yes. Uh, Crowley got the first snap, um, but Mayan Williams got the first snap for the other team. So there, you know, Mayan, and as far as that goes, Master Teague was not, he was, he was in pads. He didn't play. Mm -hmm. So all we can really decipher at this point is that your top three running backs <laughs> Let's overreact. Let's do it. Your top three starting running backs are Crowley, Williams, and Teague in no particular order. That's that's our overreaction. Uh, Henderson looks every bit of the stud that we think he is. Um, I think he'll see. He's not. I don't think he's going to start this year. He'll see snaps this year. Uh, Crowley, uh, Stewart says Crowley's the running back I've been waiting on. Yeah, I think so. I, I think we've been overlooking Crowley a lot as just a general Buckeye public. Um, I, I think we've just been over. I think we've been overlooking him. Mm -hmm. And Ohio State has a complete glut at running back. But it's hard. Again, like Kyle said, it's a spring game. It's really hard to tell with running backs. Same with linebackers. It's really hard to tell. Um, and, and tight ends, too. Can't really tell too much from tight ends. But Jared, overreacting. Cade Stover yeah. will get significant playing time this year. Maybe. Um, I, that's, that's my over. That's going to be another overreaction for me. Cade Stover, there, there's a play there, like right at the end zone. Yeah. He made this beautiful catch, it, wrote yeah. incomplete because he was out of bounds, but he made this great catch right out of bounds there. Showed, showed some good hands there. Yeah. Uh, I, I like Cade Stover. I think uh, the fact that Ohio State was like, Definitely looking to get a tight end in the transfer portal. And then all of a sudden weren't uh, mm -hmm. trying to find a tight end in the transfer portal. Tells you what you need to know about Cade Stover. Yep. Uh, uh, we didn't, we didn't see, we didn't see G Scott at all, which was rumored to be maybe potentially going to tight end as well. So we didn't really get to, to see any of that. Uh, the other, the other thing we were really interested in is that linebackers we've talked uh, significant about the linebackers who's going to fill in after it seemed like, five years of the same three linebackers at Ohio state, who's going to be coming. Who's going to be these starters. I thought Mitchell had a great game. Uh, there was a play. I think it was in the first half or the beginning of the second half made a big hit right at the line against Henderson um, showed really um, uh, looked really good in terms of having a um, being able to tell where the ball is going to go, where the play is going to end up being, um, Eichenberg looked really good in pass coverage on outside linebacker. Uh, so I, I thought Simon, overall, I thought the linebackers did okay. I thought Cody Simon looked the best. Again, it's, oh no, I'm sorry, we're ever acting, we're ever acting. Cody Simon's the better of the best ever. Uh, there, there's the, but no, in all seriousness, I think, again, it, it's a spring game and yada, yada, yada. But Cody Simon, I thought, looked like the best linebacker of the day. And when I say that, I say true linebacker because I'm not sure what what Craig Young is at this point, other than all over the ball. He's in that bullet position. Uh, he's in that BLT. Uh, is he a linebacker? Is he a safety? I don't know what what. Ha but but we ha we we have Jared the best linebacker hybrid in the country in McCullough, who's our long snapper and linebacker. <laughs> Rowan looks like he's ready to hit some people. <laughs> Listen, no, no, no shade to his brother, but 
Rowan looks like an actual football player. <laughs> I said no shade, but that was mean. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, the I, I thought the linebackers looked good. I thought they looked athletic. Um, I'm really excited to see what Craig Young does this year. I'm really excited to see what um, Mitchell does this year. I I thought Pope at times looked good. Um, but uh, yeah, I think Cody Simon and Young, Simon and Young, I think were the two that really popped off the screen for me personally. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, another name I want to put in here, I know you briefly covered the defensive line, but I want to, I want to give a shout out to cage as well. Cage yeah. cage, especially in that second half, uh, showed, um, uh, showed to be very disruptive at times as well. I think he had a sack in there. Uh, but yeah, at times cage just so should to be very disruptive right down the middle as well. Yeah. Ohio State looking for some depth along the defensive tackle position. There's opportunities there as you know, mm-hmm. Haskell Garrett's your only is your only, I would say true Ohio state veteran there. Antoine Jackson, of course, uh, has been playing college football for a while, but only at Ohio state for a couple of years. Yeah, it's uh, mm-hmm. it's hard for the defensive line to get great looks during a spring game because they can't actually hit the quarterback or the running back. So it's 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 hard. Yeah. Uh, but let's, let's right. Kyle. I think we need to talk about the defensive backs because well, that's exactly where I was about to go. I was about to go in there. The defensive backs. We're uh, reacting, right? Yes. We're back, baby. DB, Demario, we're back. Demario DB one, right? No. Okay. No. 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 <laughs> No, no, no. Uh, but no, I, I thought the defensive backs looked really good. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's, so we're getting some chats uh, down there in the Discord. Young um, looked good. Watts looked good. Young, who we talked about as a linebacker, but you know the bullet is a hybrid, looked really good. Um, I don't remember seeing Cavazos. Uh, Brawlsack asks, did. Cavazos play. Um, I I I I haven't like rewatched the game yet. I will, but I haven't yet. Um I so I don't think so. I saw, I saw uh Denzel Burke out there as well. Uh, yeah. I think I saw also saw Martinez out there. I saw Cam Martinez make a couple plays that I really liked. So Ryan Watts got the one interception of the game. Um I think it was. I didn't see wide receivers running completely open much. Um, I, I think I saw Chris Olave beat a couple guys pretty bad, but that's Chris Olave. He's going to do that a lot this year. Um, Garrett Wilson jumped over a few guys and that's Garrett Wilson. He's going to do that to a lot of people this year. Um, well, I'm not so sure about that one. If I'm being honest with you, brawls, uh, Brawls says even the long passes were well contested. Those long passes were well contested because Justin Fields wasn't throwing them. Because uh, I think all of those long passes came up short. I don't think there was. I think there was maybe of all the deep balls. I don't know if one of them looked particularly great. Um, McCord had a decent one over the middle. But even then, the defensive backs had an ability to catch up. Um, now, I'm not saying that the defensive backs would have been like completely burnt if it was Justin Fields throwing it, because you just don't know. But in all of the deep balls I saw, the defensive backs had an opportunity to close some extra ground. Mm-hmm. Uh, ransom. Uh, we we went along and talked. Haven't talked about ransom. I thought ransom had a really good game yeah. too. Uh, there were there were times when you saw he was being disruptive as well. Um, we we did brawls. Yes, but if you if you have, go ahead and ask if you got a question. <laughs> uh, yeah, I thought overall I I, I was kind of a mix of being they were okay to um, looking better in terms of the defensive backs as a whole, but. It was really hard. I put down in my notes here and you can see Jared hard to tell with all that talent at wide receivers. It is hard to tell with all, but, but it's with all of that talent at wide receiver, 
again, I didn't see any guys getting roasted. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I think that's. Uh, Brawl, Brawls says Eichenberg didn't look great in coverage, Kyle, oh, well, which is the opposite. I, I, of what wrote, you I wrote down that I thought he looked pretty good in coverage, but. OK, I'll, I'm, again, I haven't rewatched the game yet. I'm going to I'm going to take <laughs> I'm going to take a little extra care, maybe looking at that discrepancy of opinion. Uh, yep. The. But oh, so back again to the defensive backs. I thought they looked completely competent, especially considering how young the defensive backs, especially the cornerbacks are Martinez, redshirt freshman, um, Watts, redshirt freshman, Denzel Burke, a true freshman out there playing. And again, they didn't have seven banks. So that's your best cornerback off the field. I don't think Proctor played a ton of snaps if my memory is if my memory and my observation is great. So that's probably, that's your second defensive back off the field for, for much of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yep. We said Rowan McCullough, Rowan McCullough, starting middle linebacker, Jagger LaRue, starting quarterback. Right. That, that's right, the Jared. takeaway here. All right, Jared. Um, we got some questions we have to answer here because we are running well, about hold the on, hour. Just real quick. Here. I wanted to put one last button on the defensive backs. All right. Ohio you got, State you got wasn't. Seconds, yeah. I I only need one sentence. Ohio State wasn't throwing anything complex at them. It was very vanilla offense. They have those two sentences. Just okay. just to take it back, I thought they looked good. They weren't challenged schematically. Yep. All right. Let's answer some Ask Slipcast questions. If you, listener, listening at home, listening on YouTube here, want to ask a question, hit us up in the Discord. Go to the Ask Slootcast question. Once you become a member or a, as we call it, a freshman as well, you've been participating in our Discord, you can ask a question and appear on our show. You can so also first send us here, an email, sloopcast at gmail.com. Or email at sloopcast at gmail.com. Uh, Kubuto, if Trey Henderson gets 100 plus rushing yards three times this season, does he officially take over the Trey Hundo nickname? That's a that's a great question. And yes, All right, I mean, cool. not take it over, co-own it. Mm-hmm. They'll share it. Uh, Gangland oh. asks, Seabert uh, missed two field goals. I'll, I'll get back do to we ring the also. panic. Do we ring the panic alarm I'm for sorry, those two I'm missed sorry. field goals? Uh, because we're overreacting today. Yes. All right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, I put it. I, I put in here because it was asked earlier. Who 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 has the number four quarterback spot? Is it Jagger or JP? That's Jagger. Or no, excuse me. It's Kyle McCord because Jaggers are starting quarterback. All right. <laughs> All right. It's Brawley, Jagger. Brawley put in here. Uh, hold on. J- Jag- Jagger is a fifth year player, I believe. I believe um, so. Texas AM transfer. Uh, I think he's in his fifth year. And JP is a walk on true freshman mm-hmm. yeah all right Bra- brawley asks did uh, did both o-lines underperform did both uh, uh, offensive lines underperform um it's 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 tougher to play offensive line than it is to play defensive line for many reasons one because if when you split the team in half you have 10 positions to fill as opposed to four so or eight rather, excuse me. So that that's going to run you thinner right there. Second, it is just tougher to play it. It is just tougher to play offensive line versus defensive line. Also, Ohio State does recruit better at defensive line than they do at offensive line. So add that on top of it. I I will say I will say that it's it's tougher. It's tougher in a spring game because cohesiveness along an offensive line is so important. It's very tough to put a brand new unit together with only half of your people. It's it, yep. playing offensive line in a spring game is very tough. Yep. But to answer the question, did both O-lines underperform? Yes. Yeah, but it's a spring game that that will happen. Yes. <laughs> All right. Buckeye Zach, what grade would you give the defensive backs after the spring game? If you give it, let's, let's just give them a, a 10 point scale, 10 being 10 being the best. 
One being that, oh, we're back to 2020 again. <laughs> what would you grade them? Mm, six and a half. Yeah, I was thinking about five, six. I see a lot of potential. Mm-hmm. That That's okay. it. I see a lot of potential. I, I don't see a great defensive back unit, but I see the potential for a great defensive back unit. Mm-hmm. Michigan Bucknuts. Yes. Did the, defense, did the defensive back. backs make enough plays to make you think they'll be improved at this year? Uh, if if improved is compared to last year, yes. Yeah. And then and then to go along with that, Stewart asks. I don't know if he gets much Demario, worse than last year. Why is Demario a good fit at DB one? He's not. No, I, I love that they're trying to do something different with Demario, and all, all the all, all the luck in the world to him. But yes, if he's if he's in your top four corners, if he's legitimately in your top four corners, there's a problem. Sorry, <laughs> I, I know he's a fan favorite, and I'm sorry, but facts is facts. Uh, another question from Buckeye Zach. Not only will we see significant, not only will we most definitely see Jack Sawyer get significant playing time next year, but do you think he'll be a starter by week one against Minnesota? And uh, I think I think we kind of answered this yeah, already. I, answered I don't I don't think so unless we see some injuries that we do not wish would do not wish will happen. Yes. Uh, uh, we we got see. some additional questions that rolled in the Discord uh, just uh, dur- during our live chat here. A couple of good ones from Brawls I want to hit. Okay. Um, let's see. Offensive line versus defensive line. I think we kind of answered that one. It's just way tougher to play offensive line in a spring game. Uh, he says, what happened to Hancock? Is he hurt? A uh, Hancock is not an early enrollee. He'll be joining in the summer camps. He's still in Correct. high school. Yep. So there's there's more talent coming to the defensive back room. Um, and there's another oh crap. Um there's another top flight cornerback recruit who's not yet with the team either. Uh once again, my name recallability is not where it needs to be. Um, JK Johnson. Thank you, Stuart. Ah, oh, Stuart, you want to be, you want to produce the podcast, Stuart. <laughs> <laughs> no. we're, and we're, and we're still missing. <laughs> he says no. And we're still, and we're still missing one top player as well that we're still waiting to hear from. Yeah. 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 There's, there's help coming to the defensive end room as well. <laughs> Let's not forget about that. Uh, I think that's it. I think that's I think that's it for the for the spring game here. Uh, there's a lot to there's a lot to like. There's a lot of questions that still hasn't been answered. Um, but I think overall, my overall thought about that there's potential. There's good potential here at um, for this for this fall, both offense and defense. I, I think offensively, we're going to be fine no matter who's going to be. The quarterback, I mean, the quarterback's going to be bailed with the talent that we are yeah. at wide receivers. The defense, I think, will be improved. Um, more practices, less restrictions for the players to practice will definitely help out, uh, get some more experience. But I, I think overall, the, I think we'll see an improvement. Now, how much improvement? We'll see. But I think we'll definitely see an improvement with our I will, defense. I sure. will be shocked if the defense isn't significantly better and yes significantly better i would be shocked if the defense is not significantly better that being said that is a pretty low hurdle to jump over if we're being honest if if the comparison is to last year's defense to be significantly better than it should be expected and it is Mm mm-hmm uh let's see i think i think that's it? it I think that's all the questions we have here. I think that's everything of going through our notes. Uh, Brawley does have a good off topic question in there. Maybe we'll save that for the. (laughs) No, we can answer that right now. Have you ever seen a sideline warning in a spring game before? No. (laughs) There was somebody, there was somebody in our discord. 
I don't know. I think it might have been Austin. Uh, it said, "Oh, the the Big Ten refs getting getting ready for the fall season already." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Peak Big Ten. <laughs> yes, peak Big Ten. Yes. I mean, they call a sideline warning. Meanwhile, Ryan Day is literally standing on the field, like in the <laughs> middle of the hashes. But yeah, uh, Brawley also had a good like movie question in there. If you want to save that for Kyle's corner, if you, I don't know if you have anything for Kyle's corner. I, 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 I do have something in, in Kyle's corner. I, I can, I can mention that as well, but let's go ahead and today's episode. All right. Uh, yeah, that's it for today's episode. Uh, get your Sloopcast merch while you can, because the Ohio State lawyers are dicks. So if there's a, if you want to buy this DBU shirt, for example, uh, you might want to do it now, uh, just because you never know. Uh, so go ahead and check out the uh, merch.thesloopcast.com store. That is merch.thesloopcast.com store. If you want to buy like a t-shirt from us, but you don't necessarily want to like wear podcast merchandise, we got just like some general Ohio stuff. And you can find that at 70 dot, or excuse me, 7071, all numeric, dot thesloopcast.com. And if you're looking for any of our links, just go to the sloopcast.com and all that is is a campsite page filled with links to all of our other stuff. So if you're looking for our YouTube channel, our, our podcast feeds, our merchandise stuff, our social media stuff, Discord stuff, Patreon stuff, you can find all of those links at the sloopcast.com. And uh, make sure to follow us on YouTube. And make sure to follow the Buckeye Scoop channel on YouTube. If you don't know, on YouTube, we upload this to two separate channels. We have our own channel and we have the Scoop channel. Please subscribe to both. I don't care where you watch it. If I'm being honest, with you, I don't care where you watch it at all. In fact, we actually get AdSense stuff over at Buckeye Scoop. So maybe watch it over at Buckeye Scoop. But please subscribe to us anyway, because why not? Mm -hmm. And uh that's it. That's that's all the that's all the plugging I feel like doing today. Kyle, what do you have in Kyle's corner? Um, two things. Well, one question here from Brawley. Who is your all time favorite movie villain? One, the Joker, uh, and that maybe extends past simply movies. But bat, but you know the Batman's Joker is certainly on there, especially Heath Ledger's Joker. But mm -hmm. that's not to take anything away from any of the other Jokers. Yeah, I think Thanos is a great movie villain. Mm -hmm. If you want to uh, go, if you want to go old school, like old old school, Jared. Yeah, Maleficent. That's I think a, that's a, some Disney old it, school there. That's a, that's a, a good one. It's a um, really good one. Brawls. Of course, I mean, Brawls is a hardcore Star Wars guy, so he's going to drop a Darth Vader on us. And I dare you to say that's wrong because <laughs> it's mm -hmm. not. And, and Stewart's is Darth Helmet. I, uh, what, yeah, once again, not wrong. All right. Um, the other thing, Jared, starting today, but as we're, we're posting this, it would be yesterday. The crew starts to defend their title. They get to play Philadelphia Sunday at 530. Yep, I know yep, they've yep. already played a couple of games already, but that's in that's in the CONCACAF yeah. tournament. They also play one um, next weekend as well. But then the following weekend, uh, the first. Uh, the first yep, May 1st, they will be playing Montreal. So that's the following Saturday. So again, Sunday, they play Philadelphia, the 28th, they'll play a CONCACAF game. And then on the first, they'll play Montreal. So excited to see the crew back in action here and see how they do to defend their title. Absolutely. All right, Kyle, that's it for today's show. Um, that's it. So yeah, let's, uh, let's go ahead and end it. I actually did my job today and lined up a band before we started. Good job, recording. Jared. Yeah. Isn't it nice when I actually do my job uh, <laughs> tonight? And you know, not only did I do my job, Kyle, I, I made sure to jump on Bandcamp and find a brand new band we've never played before. So I extra did my job.
All right. Uh, the name of this band is Palette Knife. Uh, they are a punk band from the Columbus area. The name of this song is Ponderosa Snake House. And uh, we'll be playing that for our, our audio only listeners. So you can go ahead and listen to that. Uh, our audio only listeners. And if you're a podcast listener and you still want to hear the song, check the show notes uh, because there'll be a link to a YouTube video with that's the song. So I always feel a little bit bad for our, our YouTube people because they don't get to hear the music, but there's always a link in the show notes to the song. So if you want to hear that, go down there, give that a listen and give them a follow as well. Follow all the people. They're free. I don't know. I don't know if you guys know this, but when you subscribe to someone on YouTube, it's free. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that's uh, that's it. Punk band from Columbus. Once again, name is Palette Knife. And with that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music. And of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Palette Knife. We have some Rick Moranis love going on in the Discord right now, and I co-sign all of it. <laughs> I love Rick Moranis. You know what? You guys are missing one of my favorite Rick Moranis movies. Of course, it's a it's a Steve Martin movie, but still. My Blue Heaven. Can we get some love for My Blue Heaven? Or Parenthood. He's very good in Parenthood because, you know, I don't know if you guys know this or not. He had a system for eating pancakes. And I can relate. Who is the most underrated actor of all time? I don't feel like I'm near enough of a film geek to give a good answer to that. Like, I feel like I'm only going to answer that by giving someone who's not actually underrated. <laughs> Name a time where a sequel was better than the original. Um, do we include it? I feel like that used to be a good question, but I feel like they specifically set up movies now. As I say, you can kind of go some of the Marvel movies. Yeah, because it used to be like the sequel was never better. And then someone would always go Godfather 2 and everyone go like, OK, Godfather 2. But that's like, it. Empire like is also my favorite Star Wars movie. Or even like the Lord of the Rings set, too. I think I think each one got better than the, than the previous one. Right. But does that count? Because it was yeah. set up from the beginning to be a trilogy. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that counts. Same with Harry Potter. It was set up to be a franchise from the beginning. I don't know if that belongs in the conversation or not. Yeah. Now, I say Brawl says he says the trilogies don't count. But I do think that... Oh, maybe, Empire maybe, maybe. Empire counts because George Lucas didn't know he was going to get to make a second Star Wars movie. It's not like maybe. they knew that was going to be a trilogy from the beginning. So even though that's a trilogy, I still think that counts. What about in something more recent? Maybe like The Dark Knight. Dark Knight was better than the the first Batman. Uh yeah. Oh, I said it. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we said empire. <laughs> yep. You yep. can count a sequel trilogy versus an original, but if any of the star Wars sequel is better than the original, then your opinion is garbage. Yeah. To me. And, it, and I, I like star Wars. I do. But if we're being super honest, there's like. And again, if we're talking like, especially main storyline, star Wars. So maybe not counting Rogue One, which I think is good. If we're yeah. talking like main storyline, the nine primary Star Wars movies, there's like two good ones, if we're being honest. There, what? I said it. What about Godfather? I said Godfather. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. All right, let's go ahead and <laughs> this episode. We could go on about this. So. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> And the last thing anyone needs is a, another podcast of two white guys talking about movies and TV and comic books. We need that about as much as we need another Ohio State podcast. All right, let's uh, 
Yeah. Uh, no, the, the original Mighty Ducks is better, Stuart. Get out of here with that. 100. I like the sequel. The sequel was good. Number two was good. I'm not saying it was bad, but. All right. Uh, yeah, let's let's go and end the show. Um, just queuing something up real quick. Once again, I'd like to thank Palette Knife for ending today's show. And I would once again like to thank the Iron Bean Coffee Company for sponsoring today's show. Uh, let's see. They they have a a new line of of coffee over at the coffee over at the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Uh, they have their main brand, but they have a they have a new side brand that has a lot more flavored coffees. So if you're into your flavored coffees, uh, we have we have some flavored coffees and they're under a different brand. As I said, uh, these are called murder coffees. Uh, so for example, there's the serial killer, which is a vanilla buttercream. Uh, I, I'm not, I don't do a lot of flavored coffees anymore, but I, I do a vanilla buttercream. Uh, there's the solace, which is ginger snap. There's the stay awake, uh, which they simply say is murder, murderously caffeinated. I might have to click the link to find out exactly what's happening in that one. Uh, there's the bloodbath, uh, which is a red velvet cake. So, you know, that's going to be chocolatey right there. And then there's the blueberry cinnamon crumble, which, and I think I've pointed this out before. The one time I got the unicorn, I think this is what was in it. And if that's true, it's great. Also, there's the unicorn, uh, which is a flavored coffee. That's under the normal brand. Uh, that's uh it's a mystery bag it's a it's gonna be a flavored coffee what's it gonna be flavored like you don't know you'll find out when you open it that and it, it's really just that simple uh there's also the dylan's grog uh that one's actually under the iron bean brand as well but that's a flavored coffee um there's the they have an irish cream coffee under the main brand and intense blueberry and mint chocolate chip and a mom's carrot cake all of those are under the main brand so they are expanding some of their flavored coffee offerings to go along with their large portfolio of uh, non-flavored coffees. But you can find all of those things for yourself over at ironbeancoffee.com. And by the way, free shipping over $50. And if you find that one coffee you love the most, you can sign up for a subscribe and save service. Ironbeancoffee.com. Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode was also brought to you by our good friends over at the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Kyle based has in visuals. Cary, Ohio. Uh, mentioned just the number of great seasonings that the Mad Canadian has over. What about some of the box sets? Hey, you want to you want to buy you want to buy some bulk packages here that the Mad Canadian has? Well, head on over to the Mad Canadian BBQ.com and check out his three box sets. You can purchase the whole hog, which is one of each of the seasonings over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Get to save money by, by ordering the box set. Or you can just purchase the other two here. One is the Just Send It, uh, has a just a versatile seasonings, SP Bud, Sonoran Heat, Cajun, Smoked, just an overall just great collection to pretty much cover your, your basic needs as far as barbecue seasonings. Or you can go with the Sweet Heat. It's it's a box set with a little bit of sweet, a little bit of heat, a little bit of both. Uh, it includes the Four Horsemen, the Discord, the Old Fashioned, and the Tube Border. Um, check out those great box sets, um, or the Whole Hog, if you, if you want to support the Mad Canadian, purchase each of them. By all means, buy one, buy two, buy one for your entire family um, over at the MadCanadianBBQ.com. And be sure to use that promo code SLOOPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where he has your butt covered. <laughs>